In this video, I'll show you how to write a script that will automatically ping and center the player's location on the map anytime you change the active page. And this is really handy because when you change pages, now your players won't need to scroll around trying to find their tokens. The map will just automatically center for them. So let's see how to do this. All right, so kind of the prerequisite step before we write any code is to go onto the maps and we need to put a token onto the map that designates the player's start point. This is where we're going to center the map on. And I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to put a, a D12 token onto the map. Just going to drag it on here. And I'm going to put it onto the GM layer. And I'm going to give this token a name. I'm going to call this player start. Save changes. And then I'm going to do this. I'm actually just going to copy this token and I'm going to do the same thing on my other page. And again, I'm going to put it wherever my player's uh, starting point is. And again, I'm just going to put it on the GM layer. So both maps now have this player start token on them. Okay. So now with that done, we're ready to start writing some code. So in your game's main page, go to settings, API scripts. And we're going to create a new script. And let's call this script auto ping. And let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see what's going on in the code window. Okay. So in previous videos, we've done things where we type commands into the chat box. We're not going to do that this time around. This time we want this event, this ping, to happen automatically when we change pages. So for that, what we're going to say is on change colon campaign colon player page ID. So basically what this is saying is anytime the ribbon gets moved to a different page, that is the, the page that the players are actively on, anytime that changes, we want to do this function, whatever we define inside these curly braces right here. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is find that player start token. And then once we found it, we're going to ping it. So to find the token, we're going to use a command called find objects. So for that, we're going to say var tokens equals find objects. And that's open paren open curly brace. And when you do a find objects command, you provide a list of properties and values that you're searching for. So the first property we're going to put in is name. We're going to look for a token who or a, an item whose name is player start. And that item should be of type graphic. And if you remember from other videos, graphic uh, applies to tokens and maps and this token that's called player start that we're looking for is going to be on a specific page and the page that it's going to be on is called campaign get player page ID so we're finding an a token whose name is player start its type is graphic and it's on the page that has the ribbon is basically what we're saying now the find objects command is going to return an array of items. Even if only one item was found, this tokens variable that we created is still going to be an array. You know, a lot of times when you use find objects, you're going to be getting back a list of items. You want to find all the tokens on the board or, or something like that. But here we're just looking for one specific token, which means that find objects is going to return an array with one item in it. So to kind of just make this a little easier to, to read, I'm going to say var player start token equals tokens zero. And remember that arrays in JavaScript are zero based. So the first item in the array is item number zero. And since we're only expecting to have one item in this array, it's going to be item zero. So we're just going to call that var player start token. So now we have a reference to that token on the board. 
So the next step is to actually ping it. And the way to ping a token is with a command called send ping. Now, send ping takes a handful of parameters. And the first ones are the X and Y locations on the map where we want to send the ping. So for that, we want to ping the player start token. So we're going to say send ping player start token dot get left. And that is going to retrieve the left property of the player start token, which is the X location that we want to send the ping to. Now we want to put in the Y location. And for that, that's player start token dot get top and top is the y location so we've got the x and y location that we want to send the ping at that's cool we also need to say what page we're sending the ping on and for that we're going to say we're, we're going to ping the same page that the token lives on so that's player start token dot get page id the next parameter is the player ID whose color you want to use when you send the ping. So if you look in your game, you'll notice that all of your players have a color associated with them. And by passing in a specific player's ID, you could use that player's color. Honestly, I really don't care about that. I just want a ping to occur. So if we just put in empty quotes here so just a double quote and then another double quote nothing in between no spaces or anything then that will just say I'm going to send the ping in yellow so it will just you know, when the ping actually happens the ping color will be yellow rather than that pink that that just went off for me and honestly that's fine I just want the ping to occur I really don't care what color the ping happens in if you really don't like yellow maybe you're a Silver Age Green Lantern or something like that, then you can always go out to the Roll20 documentation. I'll include a link to that in the description of the video so you can see how to retrieve a specific player's ID and then use that. But for our purposes right now, we just want the ping to happen, so I'll keep that in yellow. And the final property or parameter, rather, that we're going to pass in here is true. And true means we're going to center the map on this ping location. If we had this set to false, then it would fire a ping, but it wouldn't move the player's view to center on that location. All right, so there we go. Now let's go ahead. We're going to save this script. All right, so we have saved, and this looks good. So let's try it out. Okay, and now I'm going to move my, my players from the temple to the town battle, and let's see what happens. And nothing happened. Okay, why is that? Well, what happens here is this ping is happening too fast. So the page changed. Roll20 found our player token and it fired that ping. But the problem is the ping happened while the player was still on that black page loading screen. So because of that, they didn't see the ping. So what we need to do is slow the script down a little bit. We need to wait for a second or two, let the page load, and then fire the ping. So the way that you can insert a delay into JavaScript is with this command called set timeout. And so we're going to say set timeout function open close paren open curly brace Right, so I'm going to have it look just like that. And then below the send ping, we're going to close the curly brace, comma. And then the number of milliseconds that we want to wait. So if you want to wait one second, that's 1,000 milliseconds. I'm going to wait for 1,500 milliseconds. So I'm going to pause for 1.5 seconds, close paren, semicolon, and for readability's sake, let's tab in that send ping. So basically anything that's in between these curly braces here will be executed after this amount of time has passed. So we're going to change the page. We're going to find the token. Then we're going to wait 1.5 seconds, and then we'll send the ping. So let's save that. Okay. 
And now let's try again. So I'll switch my page again. We're going to go from the town back to the temple. And there you go. You see the ping fired and it centered the player's view. Let's move it back to the town. And there we go. So that took care of the problem that we were having. So let's go back to the script. Now the thing to know about this is this 1.5 seconds, this is not an exact science. Okay, my players, things tend to load within a second or so, so that works for me. But if you have a player with a really slow connection, that may not be enough time. You know, you may want to set this up to, say, two seconds. Honestly, I wouldn't make it wait much longer than that because then you could have changed the page and then so much time has passed that the players have actually just scrolled over and found their tokens and then the ping fires and you know then that doesn't really help much. So what I'll do is show you in a minute how you can create a macro that will allow the players to ping themselves. So if you do have a situation where three out of your four players, for example, have fast connections and the auto ping takes place, that's great. But then that last player would be able to click on a button and then find themselves as well. So we'll show you how to do that in just a sec. But before we do, we do need to put a little bit of error handling into the script here. Because let's say that you've changed the page to one that doesn't have a player start token. You know, maybe you've got a campaign landing screen, or maybe you've got a screen that you put up while you take a break in the middle of the game. There probably won't be a player start token on those pages, and the script would cause failures and errors if it went looking on a page that didn't have that player start token. So what we're gonna do here is say if player start token equals 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 undefined then we want to return so basically what we're saying here is if player start token is undefined that is we did not find player start token on the page that has the ribbon we're just going to jump out of this function completely we'll exit and that won't cause failures so let's say that we do want to have it so that our player can ping themselves right they can click a button and be taken to that start point well, for that, we're going to create a chat command. So we're going to say on chat message, and we're going to say function msg. So we're going to take the message that was typed into the chat. And we're going to open up some curly braces here. And we're going to do whatever's inside these curly braces. And if you've seen some of my other videos, this next part is going to look very familiar to you. We're going to say if msg type equals equals API. And API means that the item that was typed into the chat starts with an exclamation point. So if it starts with an exclamation point and, and, and is two ampersands in JavaScript, message.content dot index of and we'll say ping start equals equals zero so what we're saying here is if the message type is api that is it starts with an exclamation point and it starts with ping start so if i came in here and i type in ping start that is exactly what we're looking for. This is the first thing that was typed into chat that would fire our command. But if I typed, hello, ping start, then that is not at the beginning of the line anymore. So the command wouldn't fire. So let's go ahead and let's see that. Okay, so if it starts with ping start and it's an API command, then, well, what we wanna do is all this stuff here. And while we could just copy and, and paste this, that's really inefficient. You don't want to duplicate the same code over and over again in your script. So what we're going to do is take this stuff and we're going to put it into its own function that we can call whenever we want. And the way to do that is like this. We're going to say function and we'll call this function ping start token. And then we're gonna open a curly brace. And now what I'm gonna do is just cut a bunch of the stuff here. We're just gonna grab all this stuff here. I'm gonna cut that, paste it in here. And then I'm also going to grab the ping, 
cut that and paste it in. Um, notice I'm leaving the set timeout function up here. I did not cut that as well. So what we've basically done is taken the bulk of this script and we've put it into this ping start token function. And this is doing the exact same thing now. We're still looking for that token. We're going to send the ping when we find it or we're just going to bail out if we don't. But what we're going to say now is in set timeout function, we're just going to say ping start token. So we're going to call this function. And we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to say ping start token. So we're reusing that same code now in multiple places. So we don't have to maintain multiple uh, copies of basically the same code over and over again. All right. So now when our page changes, the ping should happen. Or if a player types in ping start, then that should center the view on the start point as well. So let's save this. So here we go. Let's test it out. We're going to go back to the temple. Here we go. All right, good, the ping fired. So now we'll move back to the town. Ping fired again. So now as the player, I'm gonna scroll up and out of view and we'll type in ping start. And there you go, you see that worked. So what I could do next as, as the GM is I could create a macro for my players. I could just make a macro here and call it ping start and put in ping start here and then make this visible to all players and so now my players could run that ping start macro and that way if you did have someone whose connection was a little bit slower and they missed the auto ping they could click that and automatically be taken to the start point now one last thing that we want to do in the script here is make it so that none of these things happen until the campaign has fully loaded you know if somebody tried to run the ping start command while the campaign was still in the loading state that could cause issues now it's unlikely that would happen but just for sanity's sake uh, what we're going to do is highlight everything here press tab to indent it and up at the top here we're going to say on ready and then function open close paren delete this open curly brace, come all the way down to the bottom, close curly brace, close paren, and semicolon. Let's save that. And that's it. Now we have our script. So now we have a way to automatically ping the start location every time we change the map. And that way, your players will never have to worry about scrolling around trying to find their tokens when the page has changed. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.